It's uh, July 9th and I know I'm way past due for an update so it's gonna get you guys caught up on where I'm at and what I've been doing. I'll just start at the rear and move forward. ELT, nothing exciting but it is located. Everything on the avionics tray is finished except for I've got one more harness to run for my HDX screen. I'm waiting for a couple wires to come in for that. And then that's all done. I don't know if I if I'd mentioned this interconnect board before. It's made by a gentleman named Brian Adams. If anybody's looking for his information, I can get it to you. But it makes connecting a bunch of stuff with a Dynon even easier, and Dynon's easy to start out with. But it worked out really well for me since I was doing my avionics tray remotely. It just uh, gave me a point of contact where I could just plug everything in and it just got it. So all the power distribution comes into this, goes out wherever it needs to go to. So hooking up my autopilot and all that was extremely easy. And I've got extra spots if I ever decide I want to add more. Adahar has ended up up here. That worked out really well as far as getting everything adjusted the way it needed to be adjusted. The PDM, for everybody that asked me questions about the PDM, first off, a uh, big thank you to Josh Vincent over at P2 Arrow. He has helped me work through a lot of that stuff. But honestly, it really wasn't too bad. So anybody that has concerns about going with the PDM, don't. It's really, really simple. You've got inputs and outputs. You can program them to do whatever you want. It makes life easier. It gets rid of every solenoid and relay you could possibly have. They make it in multiple sizes. The 15 and the, the 25 are the two that I know about. There may be more. They are pretty pricey, but they are supposed to be extremely reliable. Very lightweight. It does anything you could want, possibly want it to do. In fact, you know, this will also talk to my ECU via CAN. So if, for example, if you have an electric water pump or electric radiator fan, your ECU can feed in temperature data in, right into the CAN bus of PDM and then you can tell it where you want your fans and your water pumps to kick on. So it's just little things like that. And, I, and I've mentioned before, if I want my lights to wig wag, I can program that into it. Just about anything you can think of, you can really just about do with that thing. Moving forward, I think you guys have seen this. All my fuel lines are ran. The only thing I lack doing is running them through the wings. I do have some lines on the bottom that I still yet need to run forward. But I've been mostly working on carbon fiber and the wiring harness. Uh, no grief about the, uh, <laughs> the wiring mess right now. It's not all dressed down. These all have a place to go. The uh, group you see on that side is going to a couple plugs. It's going to plug into my wings for my right wing. This is for my left wing. So in the center here, this is where a nice little cover is going to go on that. And that's where my headset jacks are going to go. And there will also be a spare USB there. This is my head rack, unfinished of course, but this will kind of give you an idea of what to look for. Made it all out of carbon fiber. So I got the plugs and everything, the plugs and the molds and everything done for that. Uh, has not been clear coated, has not been finished out. There's some finish work I need to do on it. There's a company out there called uh, Rocker Switch Pros uh, and they weren't too bad. They were nine bucks a piece for the covers but you can have them make any cover you want. They laser cut them. Pretty quick response time, very handy, easy to work with. And they use uh, carling switches, which are extremely reliable. I think uh, they're good for 150,000 cycles, just out of the bag. A couple other things, sticks. I got that all done and wired in. This is gonna be um, uh, USB ports for my ECU, PDM, and the Dynon stuff. So I can do all my updates there. For you guys that don't know about or you guys that aren't utilizing, Send Cut Send is fantastic. It's a company that you you just create a flat file, you, you send it to them. They've got just about every kind of material you can think of. I'm not sponsored by these guys, they're just great. Send them a flat file and everything I've gotten from them, I've gotten it back within a week. You just tell them what material you want, what thickness you want, and if you want a holes tap, they'll take care of that for you as well. The pricing has been really good. And response time, like I said, has been excellent. And so far, everything I've ordered from them has been exactly as it was drawn. And luckily, none of that was screwed up on my part. So that was good. As a matter of fact, I'm getting ready to do this piece out of carbon fiber as well, uh, just so it matches. This is gonna actually have a jump a port in for a, a trickle charger or a jump port actually as well to uh, jump the engine if I ever need to. Just gonna add the spot. This is actually in and done. I do actually have a couple vents I'm gonna add to it. Four for the heater and one just to let some of the hot air out of there so to keep the avionics a little bit cooler. Uh, but I'm very happy with the way that turned out. The uh, carbon fiber really wasn't that bad to mess with. It did itch really bad, <laughs> me anyway. Which is funny because fiberglass doesn't seem to bother me, but the carbon fiber sure did. The biggest problem I had with it though was clear coating it to get the UV protection on it. It 
just developed pinholes and they were next to impossible to get rid of. Now, part of it, I think it was because I was using a waterborne clear coat. When I went back to a single stage clear, that did actually work better and fill a lot more of them up. So if you're gonna be messing with carbon fiber and you wanna clear coat it, I would start with a single stage clear. You know, it's a little bit more hazardous to mess with, but it did do a better job of filling it in. I think the waterborne is just so much thinner. I'm not an expert on any of this. This is just my experience. So somebody else may have a much better way of doing it and since then I've heard that the professionals actually will spray their clear coat into their molds before they even put the carbon fiber in there and that may be the answer and that may be the key Let's see what else I think that is at it that's the update where I'm at so far I, this plane actually is going to be at Oshkosh last thing I was waiting on to come in is my Behringer brake system and rims and all that so I'm gonna get it up on gear it's just gonna be there in skeleton form and it'll be in the Skytrax booth with Till Jenkins so so look forward to seeing everybody there. All right, appreciate it. Thanks and see you next time.